So the second question that was a runner-up is on the regulation of SHBG, sex hormone binding globulin. And that question comes from Stephen, who says, Chris, what are some ways in which high sex hormone binding globulin can be reduced? Thanks. And Pamela Schoenfeld also asked about increasing it. This is a clip from a live Q&A session open to CMJ Masterpass members. In addition to this episode, you can access lots of other free samples from these sessions at the first link in the description. And so the first place I'm going to take you to is to a paper called Novel Insights in SHBG Regulation and Clinical Implications. I'm going to share my screen so we can pull up a graph from that, a figure from that paper. So this is the paper we're talking about, and I'm going to go down to this diagram. And so what they're showing here is the regulation of the gene for sex hormone binding globulin here. And when they show the arrow going forward, they are talking about the gene expression progressing. So anything that shows an arrow going forward means more SHBG is being produced. And when they show a uh, anything with an arrow pointing at the process, they mean it stimulates it. If they show this um, symbol where it looks like an arrow, but it has a flat horizontal head instead of a point, that's a symbol saying this stops that process. So they're saying that PPAR gamma 2 uh, stops SHBG expression, um, HNF4 alpha stimulates it. I'm not going to focus on the transcription factors. I'm going to focus on the things with dietary relevance. Um, Get that out of there. All right. So, one thing that they note is that olive oil stimulates the PPAR gamma gene, which in turn um, suppresses the SHBG expression. And so, they're saying that olive oil uh, wait a second, let me see. I have this. All of it, excuse me, olive oil, they're saying increases it. That's what they say in the text. So, oh, I see. Olive oil is preventing the uh, transcription of PPAR gamma. And because PPAR gamma prevents the transcription of SHBG, you have a double negative effect. And they're saying that olive oil increases it. If you go into the text of this, this is a bad inference. So they're drawing this from... Uh, olive oil consumption was associated associated with elevated SHBG serum levels, and that was come that came from uh, s- significantly higher in subjects using olive oil for cooking compared with sub- subjects using sunflower oil. Um, that makes me question these authors' understanding of of the background information because PUFA activate uh, PPAR transcription factors, and so this is not an effect of olive oil. This is an effect of PUFA. And so they're saying that it, olive oil increases it. What this should say is that high PUFA vegetable oils decrease it. And notice that many of these things that increase it or decrease it will have no relationship with, with what you would expect to be healthy. Um, and so you should think of this more from a biohacking approach. Like if you are trying to modulate your free testosterone then you want to decrease SHBG. But you, I, I don't think it makes any... You know, It doesn't correspond to if you want to be healthy, you want to decrease your SHBG because obesity is one of the strongest things that decreases SHBG. And one of the most important things that you can do to... Did I say that right? Obesity decreases SHBG. So one of the most important ways to increase SHBG is to be is to become lean and insulin sensitive and have good insulin signaling, which is associated with health, right? And obesity is associated with lack of health. So although as a biohack, you might want to decrease your SHBG to increase your testosterone, and that might promote health in you because 
you have reasons to believe in you increasing free testosterone will improve your health. Um, it's not, there's no umbrella statement that more SHBG makes you less healthy. The epid epidemiology suggests otherwise when you look at the association between obesity and lower SHBG. Okay, with that said, there's reasons you would want to increase it or decrease it. So PUFAs and high, veg high PUFA vegetable oils will increase, excuse me, will decrease SHBG. Um, also shown here is that fasting state physiology, such as AMPK and beta oxidation, lead to more HNF4 alpha gene transcription, which leads to more SHB gene transcriptions. In other words, fasting state physiology promotes more SHBG. You know, and that already you see a tie into obesity because obesity is associated with the overfed state, which doesn't have any fasting state physiology and lower SHBG. Also here is that adiponectin uh, translates into this positively. Now, adiponectin is produced by adipose tissue that is insulin sensitive. And so one of the things you want for more adiponectin is to be lean, which is another play into this. Obesity is associated with low SHBG. But not shown in this paper is that undercarboxylated osteocalcin promotes adiponectin. And undercarboxylated osteocalcin is produced during bone resorption, but it is only released during bone resorption when you have vitamin K2 to have it trapped in the bone during bone growth. And so very reminiscent of our previous discussion about wanting to cycle in and out of the fasting and fed states, we want to cycle through bone growth and bone resorption, both to remodel bone, but also because of having robust production of osteocalcin and its sequestration in bone during bone mineralization with the help of such factors as vitamin K2, which synergizes with vitamins A and D. So A, D, and K2, as well as calcium and phosphorus and the trace minerals that are in bone, all support osteocalcin being sequestered in bone. Then when you have bone resorption, which you want to cycle into during the fasting state especially, and during the response to stresses of daily life that give stimulus to remodeling your bones, and during exercise, that undercarboxylate osteocalcin will come out in the fasting state during exercise, during bone remodeling, and will make you make more SHBG. Now, it also has thyroid hormone increasing beta oxidation doing the same. So more thyroid hormone, more SHBG. However, they have a high carbohydrate diet suppresses beta oxidation and increases lipogenesis, which leads to fed state physiology, which suppresses this HBG. This is a conflicting amalgamation of mechanisms because higher carbohydrate loads actually increase active thyroid hormone. So carbohydrate is having conflicting effects here. Also, high carbohydrate diets in this presence of insulin resistance are much stronger at promoting lipogenesis, although they are equally strong at promoting lipo... Well, lipogenesis will increase in the follicular phase of the menstrual cycle regardless of carbohydrate intake in relatively equal proportions to what carbohydrate will do in the insulin-resistant person. All right. I feel, I'll feel i add one other thing. So not in this diagram. Androgens suppress SHBG. Estrogen increases SHBG, but estrone does so much more than estradiol. And if you are taking um, horse estrogen, not to beat up on horse drugs as enough has been done on, in the last two years about that, but if you're taking, um, what's it called, Premarin or the, the, uh, horse, ec the equine estrogens, you have a mix of different estrogens and you have more estrone to get the same amount of estradiol, you have a double the uh, SHBG increase that you get if you are on synthetic estradiol 
because you have isolated estradiol, you don't need as much total estrogen to get the given increase in estradiol. And you also have much less estrone, which is a stronger stimulator than estradiol. Okay, to, to sum all this up, if you want to increase your SHBG, you want adiponectin from uh, fasting feeding state cycling, um, bone growth, bone remodeling cycling with the help of vitamin K2, vitamins A and D as synergistic partners, calcium, phosphorus, and other trace minerals as a third layer of synergistic partners to build up a lot of osteocalcin that will be released in the fasting state, in the exercising state, in the bone remodeling state. You want fasting state physiology, you want leanness, you want insulin sensitivity to get SHBG to go up. If you're trying to decrease your SHBG as a biohack, not in the mistaken belief that is this is a general promoter of health in an umbrella sense, but because you have reason to, for your health, increase your bioavailable testosterone, you should be aware that to decrease SHBG, you don't want insulin resistance and obesity, which would be effective at doing that, but that's not going to help your health goals. Um, you do need to emphasize the fed state and carbohydrate dominant physiology. So if you're, if you have um, low SHBG, excuse me, if you have high SHBG and you want to lower it and you're always on a keto diet, you need some, some carb refeeds. Um, you also should be looking at your estrogen and you should get a Dutch complete test to look at your estrone. If your estrogen is elevated, you need to lower your estrogen. Um, and you know, this, this can get into conflicting areas. Like if you're on TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, and you're taking too much and it's spilling over into estrogen, that will raise your SHBG and you need to lower the dose of testosterone. Um, you know, if you're a bodybuilder, then you can dabble in these aromatase inhibitors, but, you know, watch, um, what's his name? I forget his name, but there's a dude, um, on YouTube who does this and he talks about having to perfectly moderate his estrogen, um, his, uh, his estrogen and aromatase, excuse me, his testosterone and his aromatase inhibitors, because if his estrogen levels get too high, he's tearing up in the gym, you know, but if you take too much aromatase inhibitor, you get bone defects. Um, so I would, I would not recommend playing around with that stuff. Um, but cortisol increases aromatase. And body fat increases aromatase. So if your estrogen levels are high and you're overweight, you need to work on your body composition. And if your stress levels are high and your estrogen levels are high, you need to work on your stress management as another way to decrease your estrogen levels. Um, all right. So hope that helps and thank you um who submitted this thank you Stephen, for your question and pamela for your your addition to it this is a clip from a live q a session open to cmj masterpass members in addition to this episode you can access lots of other free samples from these sessions at the first link in the description if you want to become a masterpass member so that you can participate in the next live q a or so that you can have access to the complete recording and transcript of each Q&A session, you can join at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash masterpass. You can save 10% off the subscription price for as long as you remain a member by signing up at chrismasterjohnphd.substack.com slash Q&A. That's Q&A spelled out as Q-A-N-D-A. These links are in the description.